good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Sons of Western Armenia, Vitya Ivazian, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia. The EU strongly support the work of the International Committee of the Red Cross. The protest action in Artsakh. The situation in Artsakh is critical. Artsakh Ombudsman. We are the generation of independence. We do not intend to leave Artsakh. Armen Mangasarian. Keshish Lake, built by Uratian King Rusa II, is on the verge of drying up. Madanadaran should retain the status of a research institute. Vitya Ivazian, one of the first participants in the national liberation struggle, a deputy of the Supreme Council of the Republic of Armenia and the national hero of the Republic of Armenia, was born on December 31, 1955, in the village of Spandarian, Arctic region, Shirak, Mars. In 1977, he graduated from the Department of Mechanics of the Faculty of Mechanics and Mathematics at Yerevan State University. From 1979 to 1981, he served in the Soviet Army. From 1981 to 1983, he worked at the Sirius Factory. In Abovian. Between 1983 and 1988, he worked as a project engineer and engineer technologist at the Special Design Bureau of the Yerevan Electric Lamp Plant. He also studied at Yerevan Polytechnic Institute through correspondence starting in 1983. In 1988, he worked at the Azure Production Association, where he personally created the Karabakh Committee and became its head. He transformed his data into an underground headquarters, where banned literature, leaflets, and weapons were stored. He was detained on January 12th. 1989 and held in the Barashem prison of about a month. At the first Congress of the Armenian National Movement, he was elected a board member responsible for the economic aspects. He was one of the first members of the headquarters of the Yegrabah unit of Armenia, with responsibilities for providing volunteers with clothing, food, weapons, and ammunition. In 1990, he was elected as a deputy of the Supreme Soviet of Armenia. He passed away on August 29, 1990, in Yerevan. The title of National Hero of Armenia was posthumously conferred upon him on September 20, 1996. He was also awarded the Order of the Fatherland. Our climatic conditions favor the good growth of apricots, which is why the apricot fruit is called Prunus armeniaca or Armenian plum in Latin. Apricot is the oldest and sweetest fruit of the Armenian land. In the spring of 69 BC, the Romans who invaded Armenia tasted the unusually delicious fruit from a unique tree and were delighted. On behalf of Alexander the Great, the Roman commander Lucullus had soldiers bring apricot seedings from Armenia to their countries, where the fruits were called Armenian fruit. Apricot was unknown known in Europe 2,000 years ago. The apricot tree, known as Tiraneni in Armenian, spread to European countries in the form of seedlings brought from the Armenian plateau to Greece and Rome. Apricot cultivation in Armenia has an ancient history. During excavations in Garni, under the guidance of Armenian naturalist Babkin Arakelian, apricot seeds more than 6,000 years old were discovered. Assyrian, Greek, and Armenian cuneiform records, as well as works of Armenian chronicles, testify that apricot trees known as Tirani constitute the majority of fruit trees in the Ararat Valley, historical Aragatot and Sunik, Vayotzor, and other provinces since Neolithic times for thousands of years. Today, on the southern slopes of Mount Aragat in the gorge of the Ambert River, the wild varieties of Armenian apricot trees, the ancestors of cultivated apricots, are still preserved. Between 1970 to 1986, botanists conducted experiments by crossing common Armenian apricots with Central Asian and European wild varieties. The Armenian apricot Tree showed the highest characteristics as a result of this experiment, indicating their ancient origin and longer development past. After analyzing and evaluating archaeological and historical literature, as well as the results of apricot tree experiments, many botanists have concluded that Armenia is one of the oldest centers or homelands of apricot trees. We urge Baku to ensure the unimpeded movement of people and goods along the Berzo Road. By the Speaker's statement in support of the work of the International Committee of the Red Cross, ICRC, in the South Caucasus, the European Union strongly supports the work of the International Committee of the Red Cross as a humanitarian organization working in the South Caucasus. They provide vital humanitarian assistance and protection to those in need, in accordance with the humanitarian principles of the neutrality, independence, and impartiality. Their work along the Berzo Road has focused focused exclusively on providing relief supplies and humanitarian assistance to the Armenian population of Artsakh. The authorities in Baku have an obligation to ensure the continuation of the ICRC activities and to prevent the possible humanitarian crisis. The EU strongly supports the crucial role of the ICRC in the region and reiterates its call on Baku to ensure the unrestricted movement of people and goods along the Berzo Road. 
The headquarters of the national movement to unblock the road held a protest in Artsakh. If we don't protest today, don't complain later. Tomorrow it will be too late. Whoever says I'm at work tomorrow will be out of work. Our fate is being decided. Artsakh human rights defender Geram Stepanian sounds the alarm. The situation in Artsakh is critical. The deliberate and total ban on the transportation of food and essential goods since June 15 threatens the lives of 120,000 residents of Artsakh since yesterday. Azerbaijan has also blocked the bilateral transportation of patients and medicines by the International Committee of the Red Cross. Peacekeepers are transporting supplies for their own maintenance by helicopter, while the entire population of Artsakh is threatened with starvation and international actors are taking no steps other than statements. The international community is waiting for thousands of people to die so that it can then hypocritically express its regret. I demand that the International Committee of the Red Cross light a red button warning of the danger of genocide. You can do it. My people have been betrayed by generalized criminal indifference. I repeat, the situation in Artsakh is critical, said the human rights defender. In the conditions of blockade under siege in Stepanakir, the initiative We Our Mountains was launched. Armen Mangasarian, the head of the program, told Alpha News about the plans of the initiative, noting that both in the capital Stepanakir and in the districts everyone is of the same opinion. The struggle of Artsakh residents has no alternative. According to Mangasarian, no one even intends to leave Artsakh. There is a generation of independence in Artsakh. We were born in an independent, free, strong country. Accordingly, we will do our best to change the situation. If we give up Artsakh, the next will be Armenia and Sunni, because the enemy is insatiable. Appetite comes during the meal. Currently, there are about 30,000 children and 20,000 pensioners. The 120,000 residents are mostly emphasized, but I would like not to separate the IDPs from Artsakh 2020, who were deprived of the opportunity to return to their homes due to the closure of Berzor. The blockade has affected 120,000 residents of Artsakh. Also, about 20,000 IDPs cannot return to their homeland. Most of the Keshish Lake created by Urartian King Rusa II, one of the world's oldest artificial ponds at 2,545 meters, has dried up in recent years due to hot weather and drought. Keshish Lake is located 30 kilometers from Van in a valley between the mountains of Kuch, Kozan, and Erek within the borders of Gurpinar province. With an area of 4 square kilometers, the lake and its surroundings are one of the most important places for mountain tourism. Karen Matevoysian, the acting director of Matena Daran, who has submitted an application for the position of the director, attaches importance to the issues of preservation of manuscripts, restoration of scientific research. According to his conviction, Matena Daran should preserve the status and essence of a scientific research institute. In his conversation with Armen Press, correspondent Karen Matevoysian noted that in a program he presented, he touched upon the main directions of Matena Daran's activity, which concerned the issue of security, scientific research, his popular scientific publications, cycles of Matena Daran, which will soon be presented in March to Tsak Zeragrat, Matena Gir Kayots. He also emphasized the importance of publishing the chronicles of the 16th century manuscripts, reminding that Matena Daran provides materials for researchers in various fields, historians and linguists. But there are not many primary sources related to our history of the 16th century. We have no historical information about this epoch. Therefore, chronicles are extremely important sources for history. And this edition is very important. In the edition of Matena Gir Kayos will be published the works of chronicles of the 12th century Matevos Urhaleci, Samvel Anetsi, Mkhitar Anetsi. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. <laughs> Oh uh -huh.